Hi, and welcome to today's episode of Financial Fluency. Today, I am talking with Lucy McMonagall, who is the founder of Learn About Money and also has the Wealthy Wednesday podcast show. Hi, Lucy. Welcome to Financial Fluency. Hi. Thank you, Jen. It's such a pleasure to be here. Well, and the funny thing is we just realized that we're actually pretty close to each other with you being in Phoenix and me being in Flagstaff. <laughs> so this is probably the closest interview I've done, except I've done one in person one time, but that was before I was using video. I was only doing audio back then. So it's pretty exciting. Um, that is. So anyways, I would love for you to tell us some about your current business, Learn About Money, how you got into this, how you started the business, and um, what it does for people. Well, originally I started this business back in 2010 because I decided there was, there was a really great need for individuals to try to figure out how to learn about money. Um, originally I started with financial literacy teaching people how to balance their checkbook, how to do the basic maintenance of the money, the cash flow, and how to figure out what their net worth was. But then I also discovered that as I was trying to teach them just the basic foundation, they, they had money mindset issues, which I call a money story. And it was things that I had to personally work out of because I grew up in, in a very provished situation. Um, my parents divorced by the time I was three. And so we didn't have a lot. We, I grew up on government assistance and I started that cycle. And when I worked through those issues, the first thing I did was physically learn the, the financial literacy, but then I had to work on my mind because it was always creating havoc for me. So I've transferred that over into my company that I'm currently running, which is Learn About Money. Well, that sounds great. Do you focus on any demographic? Do you work more with women than with men, or do you work with everybody in your company? I work with women entrepreneurs that are really ready to take their business to break through 100K and sustain it. And then once you get past that barrier, you're able to really start making multiple six figures and then get up to seven figures with more ease and with more grace. Hmm. So have you, I take it you've worked through those, those numbers yourself then? Yes, I have. Can you talk to us about that? Um, just a little bit. I don't want to disclose too much. Um, okay. but I'm, I, I start out very, very poor, as you have mentioned. She's, I'm kind of a rakes to riches story. By the time I was 32, I was um, a co-owner of another company, and I secured through most of the old-fashioned way and through other means um, becoming quite wealthy. And I had a portfolio that was well over several millions. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to actually go from rags to riches. Now, the thing about your money story is, is even if you break through those financial barriers, it'll find a way to drag you back down. So in 2002 and 2008, I had huge financial losses in the stock market. And I realized it was a part of my money story. So I like struggled to get all the way up there and I thought I was set for life and, you know, I'm co-owner of the company and, you know, I'm doing really good. And then all of a sudden, boom, straight down. But I had to realize that the money story will always bring you back to your financial set point, no matter how far up you go, unless you start addressing those crucial belief systems that are running around in the back of your mind. Hmm. Well, 2002 and 2008 were times when a lot of people had a lot of losses as well. You know, overall, given the stock market, the housing crisis, 9-11, uh, you know, the 2001, 2002, the tech bubble changing. So there were a lot of external things going on. But what, what did you work through internally for yourself in both of those? Internally for myself, the main thing that I had to work through is to trust that there was a grander plan and that money wasn't the end all be all before I thought, well, if you had money, then, you, then everything was fine. Everything would be fine. You'd be happy. Mm -hmm. have freedom. You could do what you want, but that's really not the truth. Money is a tool that allows your life to be more comfortable, but it's not the end all be all. And you, it doesn't, it doesn't um, dictate what your personal value is as an individual, as a human. 
So what I started with is I started reading books. Books have saved my life. Um, I started reading Louise Hay. Mm -hmm. And I started going through her affirmations in her book, even though her book is called um, You Can Heal Your Life. She had a lot of affirmations that were helping me with my mental mindset. From there, I also had mentors. I had trainers that were helping me with what was going on inside of me that was creating this outer circumstances. You know, why wasn't I more aware of the situation because I in 2007 I knew there was something that was going on and I wanted to pay off my house I wanted to pay off all my debt and I wanted to do this but I was listening to other people's opinions telling me that you should so I had to really learn to trust my intuition to trust when when I feel something is the right way instead of letting somebody else talk me out of it Mm -hmm. to, to fulfill that and to move forward because we all have a gauge inside of us that once we're tuned in and tapped in then we're given the proper cues on what we need to do mm -hmm. that was a hard time to uh to think about being frugal and responsible it seemed like everyone thought the housing market would go up forever i mean people were leveraging themselves to the hilt to my property, my homes, you know, the stock market was high. I could see that being a hard time to be like, you know, I actually just want to pay everything off. Yeah. 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 And, and my financial advisor was like, no, 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 it's going to mess up your taxes. It's going to mess up this. It's going to mess up that. Don't do this. This is the right way. And, and then 2008, not only did I, did the stock market go and up my, my house value went straight down, but I also lost my health. Mm. And I was in the hospital. I, I almost, um, I almost died. What happened? Um, I was bleeding out, and I had fibroids, and the the fibroids became so engorged that they would just bleed out, oh. and I was literally bleeding to death. Wow! Um, by the time the doctors finally could figure out what was going on with my legs, what was going on with this, what was going on with that. They took me in a wheelchair, brought me downstairs to OBGYN, and I had an emergency surgery. Mm. Wow, yeah. that's a lot to happen all in one go for you. Yeah, that was. And I, I was never really sick before. I was never really big, big before either. <laughs> so it, mm. um, it definitely was a lot to handle. And it took a few years to try to figure out what, what am I supposed to do? How do I do this? And fortunately, I was able to find coaches that helped me rebirth my soul purpose. And mm -hmm. now I am completely on a mission to empower women so that they do not have to suffer like my mom did, like my grandmother did, and like I did when I was younger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good mission. Yes. So all of that has kind of rolled into the new business now to learn about money business? Yes, all of that has rolled into the new business, when it, uh, Learn About Money. And I really teach women about their mindset. I mean, I can give you the structures. I can give you what you're supposed to do. And you can do everything right. But if you don't have the right mindset, and I don't mean like you, a lot of entrepreneurs, they might have, they have a pretty good mindset and they think they have a mindset, but they're not aware of the hidden things. So we go right in and we find out what's going on in the background that you're not aware of. And I show you how to become aware of that. Hmm. So what kind of things do you see people come to you with a lot that you help them with most of the time? Most of the time, people come with me, come to me because they're starting to feel fatigue. They've lost their joy. They're not excited about what they created, what they started. They're starting to feel overwhelmed. And they're having, they want to fill more clients in their live events. They want to have more visibility. But there's something that's preventing them from breaking through those barriers. And so thus, I do Abundance Breakthrough. Hmm. So what is it usually that you find is holding them back? Their mindset is 99% of the time is what's really holding them back. Anything in particular? I would say their childhood beliefs that a lot of them, they, they believe that money is the root of all evil. 
and that even though they don't believe it on a conscious level they actually believe it on some sense because they'll they'll start making a lot of money and then as soon as they get to a certain point of money they got to get rid of it they just things start happening bad luck starts happening things start breaking down etc so the mindset in a belief system that is hindering them is usually the main thing that's really preventing them from moving forward or making that income that they want or keeping it and making it and settling going up like that Mm -hmm. plateau and then drop or go up and up you know so So is it usually that the the mindset issues translate into actions they take that kind of sabotage their own success like yes like they start getting invited to things and then they refuse to go to live events or they get stage fright or that kind of thing or or how do you usually see it you know it, it, it translates into um procrastination it translates into hesitation. It translates into not picking up the phone. Um, it translates into busy work where it's like, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Instead of doing the actual things that bring clients into the door, they do everything else instead. Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of it comes down to different flavors, as I call them to you know what's your flavor today are you are you fearful are you anxiety sometimes you get anxiety other times people get migraines and you know they can't be in front of lights so then they can't go on stage and they start getting paranoid that they can't speak and like you mentioned they also get more stage fright than normal Hmm. interesting i think those are things all of us experience at times (laughs) Yeah. yeah So what kind of programs do you offer? Do you just do one-on-one work or do you have group programs that you do? I do primarily one-on-one work. I am bringing out um, uh, different group programs this year. As I'm moving forward in February, I'm releasing my first group program that's going to be working on mindset. And it's Money Mindset Mastery. That's going to be a monthly program where individuals can come on to a call, we'll discuss different topics of mindset, I'll do wheel and answers. And then from there, I'm also looking at doing special women's retreats for small groups. Hmm. Well, that's cool. So um, when people come to you and work with you for a while, what kind of results can they expect to see afterwards? So most of the results that my clients get is that they, they write their books, they get more clients, they have more influx of cash, they have more confidence, and they know what to look for when their money story starts coming back in or a new money story starts coming up out of their subconscious mind. Hmm. So for the money stories, do you have like, do you have a few that, that show up over and over for different people? Yes. Like what? Let's talk about those. One of the ones that show up over and over again for a lot of individuals is they'll find themselves saying that I can't afford that. Okay. Even though they, they have the money or they'll be looking at, they'll start making decisions according to their current income And I'm not saying go out and put all the stuff on debt or anything like that, but they'll make decisions. How can I move my business forward with yesterday's income rather than looking at doing a a marketing plan on how can I bring in this many clients so I can afford it. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking forward, they look backwards. Some of the other things that show up as a money story or as an issue is, is that they'll they'll not write their copyright like they'll hold back they'll they'll not really truly express themselves because there's a part of them that's not enoughism and when they don't feel like they're good enough or maybe it's not perfect which goes into the other extreme is the perfectionism and if they're over perfection you know like oh i don't have the 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 banner doesn't look right or or my copy doesn't look right or my website's not perfect and so they're they're fidgeting with all of this stuff so it looks perfect to them instead of 
looking finding the clients instead of providing their services instead of doing the webinar so mm -hmm. those are the common ones that show up what kind of services do most of your clients provide uh, most of my clients provide a service-based service. I work, I work with health coaches. I work with uh, people who do hypnotherapy, NLP. I work with coaches. I work with massage therapists, estheticians, people who do some type of service-based business. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that's probably a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the listeners on here. Um, you know, it's mainly for women working outside of the traditional nine-to-five. So either, um, I mean, I started off, I'm a special needs mom, so I kind of started off focusing on, on other special needs moms who left the workforce because of caring for kids. But looking around, especially since 2008, 2009, all those layoffs, so many of us are trying to work from home nowadays. And it is hard, especially this part of finding clients. I mean, if you were used to being a W-2 paid employee, you didn't have to go out and look for clients like work was there you showed up at an office and you did the work so um i know this has been true for me too i really was never in sales directly i mean my husband and i have a record label but we worked with distributors and we worked with you know pr people so it wasn't quite so direct as this kind of thing that a lot of us are trying to do online now so it does take a different kind of confidence and motivation then a lot of us got trained in both through school and our early job training if we had office jobs. That's so true. And <laughs> of individuals, you could be an absolute stellar seller for your company that you work for. Mm -hmm. and one of the mindset issues is when you start selling for yourself, all of a sudden you've got all these blocks. You, you, you just, you, the words don't come out. They start stumbling. You don't know what to say you don't pick up the phone, you start having anxiety. <laughs> so yeah. Well, a lot of us yourself. were taught young to not, don't brag, you know, don't brag and don't be vain mm -hmm. and, um, you know, don't draw attention to yourself. You know, I feel like these are, especially as little girls, we're kind of taught to be demure and polite and not do what it kind of requires to really be a salesperson, especially to sell yourself. I mean, unless you're an actor or, you know, unless you were trained in something like that where you were the product, um, yeah, it's a hard transition for a lot of people to make. It is. It is. And a lot of the barriers come up with, with our mental beliefs and our mindset. Well, it sounds like fantastic work that you're doing for people, helping them with that. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. So do you have anything right now that you are offering or promoting that um, – you know, people could go, we'll, we'll put a link in the show notes and they could go and find out what it's like to work with you. Absolutely. The, the thing that I'm offering right now is because it's the beginning of the year, I am offering a wealth manifestation planner. And it's so that you can look at your, your financial goals compared to what your tasks are and then how to do little baby steps and ahas. And it's instead of like the dreaded planner, because I hate planners, I had to come up with something that was fun. I had to come up with something that matched my goals. And I had to come up with something that wasn't going to really like cramp my style, couldn't be too difficult. So I created this and my clients just love it. And so that's what I'm offering your clients is, and it doesn't have to be the beginning of the year if you're listening to this and it's in the middle of the end of the year. It's a weekly planner. You can put your own dates on it, and uh, it's fun to do. I love planners that let you put your own dates. I'm actually a bit of a planner um, obsessive. <laughs> right now, I'm trying out this new uh, Todd Herman's 90-day planner, but oh. I usually, this for the past several years, this has been my planner. I actually should get this company to sponsor me because I show this planner on my show so often, but oh, I have a 90-day planner that I use. So um, and I settled on this one after several years of trying out tons of different ones. So, um, so, but what I love best is when you can put your own dates in, cause that way if I skip a week, if I take a week off and go on vacation, I don't want to plan my days on vacation, <laughs> you know, yeah. when I get back. So I don't want to have wasted pages in there though. So I, I love the ones that let you fill it in yourself. And I do try out lots of people's online planners too. I think someday I might make my own planner, but I want to feel like I know 
what everyone likes first before I would do that. So I will go check out your planner as well myself. So we'll put the link for that in the show notes. If you're watching this on YouTube, we'll put it in description and you can just click right there and go check out the, um, the wealth planner. Yes. That sounds fantastic. Thank you so kindly. Well, and thank you so much for coming to the show. I really appreciate hanging out with you. This has been fabulous. So I'd really like to um, send my, my thank you for who's listening to this. I hope my tips have provided you with some ahas and epiphanies so that you can move forward. And thank you, Jen. This is such, you are so fabulous. I, this is actually a fun interview. Oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm trying to keep it nice and casual and have the show, you know, feel comfortable and, and be fun. So, so thank you for coming. Bye-bye.